Hello everyone and welcome. This is Greg Jones, uh, co-editor of Ear to the Ground Music. And I want to talk to you today about buying music online. And you might think that doesn't seem like a very difficult thing to do. All I have to do is Google the song that I want and, and then uh, buy it wherever I find it. Um, but really I'm responding to a question that we get asked about how we can, as music purchasers, support artists in the best way. And so what I aim to do is sort of explain the levels of what that looks like. I'm not going to give raw data because, of course, that would all depend on the specific contract negotiation for each band and for each label. And I don't have time or uh, energy to get into all of that. What I'm focused on is how you, the purchaser, can give the most of your buck uh, towards the artists that you aim to support. So first of all, uh, and this is hashtag not sponsored, right? Uh, but first of all, Bandcamp. Uh, Bandcamp is, if the artist that you are supporting has their album on Bandcamp, that is by far the best way to support them. Odds are they have it set up so that the money is going to go straight into their own PayPal or their own uh, bank account. So that's definitely the best way to support an artist if they have their music available there. Fewer hands will be involved. And a lot of times, uh, those are, in, in this indie music space, those are people who have self-produced and, and done a lot of the work themselves, so they're able to collect on all of the royalties of it as compared to somebody who's signed to a major label where they'll have to pay for distribution and for... Um, the person who mixed the album and produced the album and, and all of those levels. So uh, first one I would say is Bandcamp and as a sort of 1B to that would be the artist's own website. A lot of times they'll have a merch tab or a click on here to buy my music. Now sometimes that goes to their Spotify page or something like that, but a lot of times they'll say you can buy it here and it'll be a link to something like CD Baby. And when you click on those, they tend to be uh, distribution outlets that are more profitable for the artist. So the first two are Bandcamp and artist stores. Secondly, I would say go through the labels website, uh, particularly independent labels. Some of the ones that send us music are labels that have a smaller distribution network, but they do offer their own online um, what a, like store. They have their own store through their website. So the, because the label makes a higher percentage of that, they can pass more of that on to the artist. So that would be the second tier. And then the third is the third, third party sellers. Uh, depending upon the, the size uh, or the notoriety of an artist, they might be available on things like Amazon or even bigger stores like Best Buy and uh, Walmart, places like that depending upon where, you know, how, how big of an artist they are, like I said. But uh, this is the third on the list because the artist is going to get a much smaller cut of something at that level. It's still, of course, better than not buying it. Uh, it's better than just uh, playing it in the background. But it's a, a nice level uh, if you want to own the album. Now, I, this is a little bit of an aside, and it might seem silly to some of you, but remember that if you buy music, even if you're purchasing it, but if you purchase it secondhand, the artist isn't going to get a cut of that. So, you know, that I remember back in the day when people were pirating MP3s, and everyone said, oh, that's awful, you shouldn't do that. Um, but a pirated copy, or a, you know, s essentially a stolen copy of music gives the artist nothing. But if you say to your friend, hey, can I borrow your, your CD? And then you listen to it yourself. Again, the artist is not getting anything for that second play. The idea, though, is that if someone hears it, they like it because it's come from a personal recommendation, and hopefully they'll go out and buy their own copy to own. Uh, so if you are going to purchase music, uh, purchase it from the artist primarily so that they make sure that they can they can have a living that they can make a living 
Now the fourth option here isn't actually purchasing at all, and that's streaming. Even if you buy Spotify Premium or any of the other services that are out there, the artist is getting a minuscule cut of that. And so you want to be careful about seeing that as well. I, you know, I'm a subscriber of the service, so therefore I don't owe the artist anything. What I would suggest um, is to utilize streaming services to find artists that you like and then go out and buy the music. And that's where I would circle you back to the uh, initial suggestions that I made. So allow streaming to be, let those algorithms work for you. Let them find artists that you've never heard of before. Let them help you, you know, maybe put on a playlist to suit a mood or something like that. Sure, that's great. But don't let that be the end-all, be-all of your music discovery process. You know, of course, I would, in a spot like this, I would plug reading blogs, you know, where we're curating playlists for specific purposes or because we like a specific sound. And, you know, use these kinds of services to find the music. But once you, and you know, you know when you love a, love a song, when you love an artist, you know when it's gone beyond, uh, you know, the, the first date of, of liking a, a song. You know when it has moved to another stage and you ought to own that. So then go and buy it and buy it in a way that the artist can benefit. And I would also say, you know, support the artist then with shares. Share the music with people that you know. Um, share the music, put the music on your playlists and share those so that other people can discover them. And certainly buy merch, you know, buy their t-shirts, buy their posters, buy their lyrics. Uh, you do those things to support the art that you love so that these people can continue to produce it. It's very easy for us to uh, just say, oh, you know, that's a one-hit wonder. I don't really want to purchase it. Uh, but the way that a one-hit wonder gets to make their second album is by having the money to produce it. So keep that in mind. I hope this wasn't too long, and hopefully you understand sort of the purpose behind this guide uh, and and why it makes sense to buy in a way that supports artists more than um, just being able to have a, a massive Spotify you know saved playlist. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye for now.